High Excellence presents Jewels from the Holy Quran A series of lectures by Mufti Ismail ibn Musa Mink Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim in the name of Allah most gracious most merciful Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala ibadihi alladhin astafa All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala complete blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all his companions and all of us may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us the true followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and may he bless us all Honored ulama, beloved brothers and sisters and dearest listeners, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in Surah Al-Kahf the story of Al-Khidr with Musa alayhi salatu was salam. Where once Musa alayhi salam was asked who was most knowledgeable and naturally being the prophet at the time, he answered he was the most knowledgeable. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to show him that if Allah wills, he can grant a different type of knowledge to some of his creatures. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, Ya Musa, if you follow a certain route, then at a certain point you will find a certain worshipper of mine and you will learn something from him that you do not know. So Musa alayhi salatu was salam couldn't wait to meet this man. And he followed the path and he went and having seen certain signs that he was told and, uh, and uh, shown by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he then realized that this was the man and he told this man, can I be with you for a moment? Can I spend some time with you? This was Al-Khidr. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also told us the story. And he says, Musa alayhi salatu was salam asked to spend the time with Al-Khidr. From this we learn that it is very, very important that when there is someone more knowledgeable than us, we take time to go and spend with them so that we can learn in their company. Musa alayhi salatu was salam, it was simple for him to sit with Al-Khidr and tell him, look, teach me a thing or two. But he didn't do that. He said, let me spend some time with you. Because when you see how they live, they are 24-7, they are day. And you will learn lots and lots of things. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the opportunities to spend time at the feet of the ulama. And may Allah grant us the ability to respect them and to sacrifice from our busy schedules to spend some time with the ulama. So Musa alayhi salatu was salam was allowed time to spend with this man al-khidr and he was told that look under one condition what is the condition that condition is that don't ask me if there is anything you don't understand wait until i explain it to you don't question what i do so the musa alayhi salatu was salam said no problem i will fulfill that condition they began to walk after some time they jumped into a certain boat and this man made a hole in in the boat and musa alayhi salatu was salam said why are you making a hole in this boat what's why it belongs to some innocent people here and you're just making a hole you are damaging the property that belongs to someone else so al-khidr told him Alam akul sabra. didn't i tell you you won't be able to bear patience i told you not to ask me i told you wait when the time comes i'll explain to you what it's all about you will see it at some point this was inspiration given to al-khidr by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he said, oh, la tu akhirni bima nasitu. Don't hold it against me, the fact that I've forgotten. Don't punish me. I forgot. Now it's okay. I won't do it again. Musa alayhi, sala, alayhi salam says. So Al-Khidr said, all right, no problem. Let's walk. Let's carry on. As they walked, they saw a young man. This man, Al-Khidr, killed him. So Musa alayhi salatu was salam automatically asked, hey, how can you kill an innocent man? He is a youngster. We don't even know him. Next thing you execute him and you carry him on like nothing has happened. So he says, and this is now the beginning of the 16th chapter of the Quran that we started with tonight. Al-Khidr said, didn't I tell you that you won't be able to understand what I'm doing? You won't bear patience regarding what you see coming from me. So Musa alayhi salam said, oh, I'm sorry. Now if I question anything you do, now you don't have to accompany me. Now you can kick me out of your company, your companionship. 
So they agreed, they continued and as they continued they went into a certain town and that the people of the town were asked to grant them some food, some accommodation and so on and these people refused to entertain them. They refused. The town said, look, you people can move, you can carry on, we don't want to see you here. They refused to entertain two visitors or some visitors. So as they were walking out of that little town, they noticed a wall that was about to collapse. So Al-Khidr took some time and he, some effort and energy and he went and he repaired the wall. He made it straight once again. So Musa alayhi salatu wasalam told him, لَوْ شِئْتَ لَتَّخَذْتَ عَلَيْهِ أَجْرًا You know these people didn't even want to entertain us. Now you are fixing their wall for nothing. If you wanted, we could have collected some money for fixing this wall. Why did you just fix it for free like this? So this is when Al-Khidr says, هَذَا فِرَاقُ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنِكَ سَأُنَبِّئُكَ بِتَأْوِيلِ مَا لَمْ تَسْتَطِعْ عَلَيْهِ صَبْرًا this is now the splitting point between me and you. I will explain to you now what has happened, what you could not bear patience regarding. Let me explain it to you. As for the boat that I made a hole in and damaged, further upstream, there was a certain leader who was taking away all the good boats. And this boat belonged to two poor people who were trying to earn sustenance through ferrying people to and from. And now if it had nothing wrong with it, it was going to be taken. So I thought, let me make a small hole. They will be able to fix it. At least it won't go away completely. And later on, they will understand that this was worth it. Because if there was no hole, it would have been taken completely. That was the first one. Now Musa alayhi salatu wasalam is listening very quietly. He's saying, yes, this was granted by Allah. The knowledge was given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to someone else. And then the second thing. He says, as for that young man, that young man whom I killed, I was inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this boy who had parents who were good, had he been granted life to see his youth and beyond, he would be very, very disobedient to his parents and he would be a means of being a burden upon his parents. So to protect the parents from that type of a child, I was inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to eradicate him, to eliminate him. Please, by all means, this does not mean that when we see youngsters who are unruly, we must go and eradicate them. No ways. This was Al-Khidr. This was Al-Khidr. He was granted knowledge by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is not to us to do all this. May Allah grant us understanding. So he says, we make dua that Allah give those parents someone else who will be better. That was the second issue that you could not bear patience with. And as for the third item, there were two youngsters whose treasure happened to be underneath that particular wall. Their father died, leaving behind for them a certain treasure. And the treasure was under the wall. Had the wall fallen, others would have seen the treasure and probably stolen it, usurped it. But if the wall was straight, then time to come in the future when they grow up, they will then find their way to that particular treasure because the wall will be up. And that is why I actually straightened the wall for free. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, We hope Musa alayhi salam could have had more patience. So we could have learned much more from the wisdom of Al-Khidr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. Now from this we also learn that when, it, when we are in the company of the ulama, sometimes they might tell us things that we don't understand. But we need to realize that sometimes it's better for us. It is for our own rectification. It is for our own good at times that they tell us certain things, whether we understand it or not. Yes, we are allowed to question. And in Islam, we are allowed to question absolutely anything if we don't understand it. We are taught as Muslims that we must understand absolutely everything. So it is not wrong to ask, but there is a method of asking. There is a time and place for asking. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who can seek knowledge, understand it, put it into practice and teach it to others as well. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after having mentioned that story of Al-Khidr, He speaks about those who, who are losers, those whose deeds shall be a waste, those who do a lot of deeds, but those deeds are a waste. قُلْ هَلْ نُنَبِّئُكُمْ Should I inform you of whose deeds shall be wasted? Who will be those who will be having deeds that shall be absolutely wasted? الَّذِينَ ضَلَّ سَعْيُهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ يَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّهُمْ يُحْسِنُونَ صُنْعًا Those who think they are doing a lot of good, 
But what they are doing is actually against what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught. Why is this verse there? Let's understand that the Mufassireen have explained and the ulama have explained that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's mission was to teach us every drop of goodness. So, مَا تَرَكَ خَيْرًا إِلَّا وَدَلَّنَا عَلَيْهِ وَلَا شَرًا إِلَّا حَذَّرَنَا مِنْ There is no form of goodness that he forgot to teach us. Nothing. So if we think that there is goodness that we can come up with, there is an act of worship that we think we should engage in. I want to read five raka'at of Salat al-Dhuhr because I feel that it is a very holy day, a, a, a very blessed day. Rather than reading four, I've got the energy. Let me add one more that automatically becomes a waste. We will waste our time and energy and effort. We are insulting Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he taught us goodness and we feel no, there was something he left. He forgot to tell us that you know what? You are allowed to add a fifth rakat if you want. So this is something we need to think of. All the acts of worship we engage in, we should try and ensure that we have been taught them by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because if we were not taught them, what was the point of engaging in them? We are basically saying indirectly that you know what? He forgot to tell us this, but this is part of deen. Let me do it. So Allah says, Those whose deeds are astray and yet they think they are doing good deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us steadfast. And for this reason, at the end of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Those who want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must ensure that all their deeds are in conformity to what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught. And they must also ensure that they do not engage in shirk. They do not associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah protect us all. Amen. Alhamdulillah. We have the brains. We have the intellect that Allah has granted us. We need to think. Anytime we want to engage in an act of worship, do you know that if we have to draw up a list of those acts of worship whereby the whole Muslim ummah unanimously will tell us that there is nothing wrong with this then that list will be so large that if we start engaging in those acts one after the other, we will not have time for those type of deeds where half the ummah is debating with you whether it's permissible or not. Why must we even go to those deeds? When there are so many deeds that are unanimously agreed upon, if I want to engage in siwak, no one's going to argue with me. If I want to, for example, read my tahajjud, no one's going to argue with me. If I want to complete one Quran every three days, no one's going to argue with me. If I want to, for example, fast a day, leave a day, no one's going to argue with me. So there are so many acts of worship that we can engage in where the whole ummah will agree with us that there is nothing wrong with these acts of worship. Yet we find ourselves going into acts of worship which are very, very questionable where the ummah begins to debate, hey, this person is engaged in wrong and this is not substantiated in the Quran, not substantiated in the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and not taught to us by the ulama. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the respect of the ulama, the respect of Allah and the respect of his messenger. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. So that is in Surah Al-Kahf. A lot of us read Surah Al-Kahf on a regular basis, but do we realize that the message towards the end is telling us, make sure that whatever we do is taught by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he has taught every point of goodness and we believe in it. He did not forget a thing. So if we feel we have come up with something different and something new, indirectly we are saying he forgot to teach that to us and that is a very, very big insult to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then in the next surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has named it Surah Maryam because the story of Maryam alayhi salatu was salam is repeated there. The story of the miraculous birth of Jesus Christ is repeated there. The fact that he is not the son of God and so on is repeated there. And Allah commences with the story of Zakariya alayhi, alayhi salatu was salam. And Allah begins to say that Zakariya alayhi salam did not lose hope regarding the male child that he didn't have. He continued making dua until one day when he was very old, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, Ya Zakariya, inna nubashiruka bi ghulamin ismuhu yahya. O Zakariya, we are giving you good news of a son that shall come to you whose name will be Yahya. 
John the Baptist, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Now he felt ashamed. You know, sometimes when a person has a child after 15 years of, after 15 years gap, and the person begins to feel that now I'm very old, my wife is very old, what answer are we going to give the public? Believe me, there is no answer. If you are married, alhamdulillah. If you are not married, yes, there, is, there are answers that you need to give. But if you are married, no problem. That is a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes a woman can give birth even when she is 50 by the will of Allah. If Allah wills even beyond that, that is the qudra and power of Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. But Zakaria alayhi salatu wa salam, he felt it in his heart and he told Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Give me a sign. Give me a sign. Give me something. Some form of item that I can achieve comfort and solace through. And Allah says, Your sign is that for three nights, don't speak to anyone. Three days and three nights. Okay, just bear this in mind. What we said, the sign of Zakaria was that he shouldn't speak. Let's go to the story of Maryam alayha salatu wassalam. She found herself pregnant. She also asked that, Ya Allah, how is this possible? And Allah says that this is through the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wants Jesus to be a sign for entire humanity, for all mankind. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the acceptance to respect that Nabi of Allah, Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then makes mention of what he told Maryam. Imagine it was difficult, very difficult. In fact, she said, ya laytani mittu qabla hadha. I just wish I was dead before this point. So many women in pregnancy, at the final stages, they wish that they were dead. May Allah not do that to us. And may Allah safeguard our women and make life easy for them. Make giving birth easy for them, inshallah. Wallahi, it is a very big jihad. Very, very big jihad to give birth. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us, Tazawwaju al-waduda, al-waluda, fa inni mukathirun bikum al-umama yawm al-qiyamah. Get married to those women who are loving and childbearing because I would like to be through you, that Nabi who has the most followers. May Allah grant us the acceptance to have as many kids as possible, but quality children. Not that we have 10 children and nine, are, nine of them are astray because we, we didn't have time to look after them. No, we must inshallah look after our children and give them an upbringing that inshallah even the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be proud of on the day of qiyamah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask him to make it easy for the women folk. As I always mention in many of my lectures, do you know what men are guilty of? They don't realize that the stretch marks on the bellies of the women, those are actually signs of contributing to the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wallahi, they are signs of jihad. They are signs of a huge sacrifice. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to understand that those marks are actually marks that may take the women to Jannah. May Allah take them to Jannah, inshallah. So, Maryam alayha salatu was salam was also told, فَإِمَّا تَرَيِنَّ مِنَ الْبَشَرِ أَحَدًا فَقُولِي إِنِّي نَذَرُتُ لِلرَّحْمَانِ صَوْمًا فَلَنْ أُكَلِّمَ الْيَوْمَ إِنْسِيًّا if a person comes to you, anyone comes to you, obviously they will question. When they come to you, tell them, I am fasting. Not the fasting in terms of abstaining from food, but I am abstaining from speech. I won't talk to anyone and point at the child. So Allah says her sign was also silence. She had to remain quiet. What does this mean? We saw both times Allah is teaching us in the surah, silence is golden. Sometimes silence can solve our problem. What type of silence? intellectual silence not foolish silence when someone says how are you doing what is your name and you say we were told to be quiet now that is very very foolish that is very very foolish silence but when someone wants to cause a problem with you they are testing you trying you they've uttered a statement of 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 a difficulty they want to really befall you with something evil you'd rather be quiet and inshallah time will heal those wounds time heals most wounds you should remember that so be quiet and intel an intellectual silence inshallah so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Maryam alayha salatu was salam to remain silent and to point at the child when she pointed at the child Jesus, may peace be upon him, spoke from the cradle, I am the worshipper of Allah. Allah very soon shall give me the book. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the book. 
and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of what else he said from the cradle. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the acceptance to understand the miracles of all these messengers of Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. After that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of some of the other prophets in the same surah, and then he makes mention of those people who left their salah, who followed the messengers. After a certain time after the messengers, they came, they forgot their salah, meaning their form of worship that they were taught by the messengers, and they began to follow their desires. So Allah says, all of them shall be punished, but he makes an exception. And I'm sure we all know what is the exception. Allah says, فَخَلَفَ مِن بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفٌ أَضَاعُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَاتَّبَعُوا الشَّهَوَاتِ فَسَوْفَ يَلْقَوْنَ غَيَّا إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا Allah Akbar. Allah says, those who came after the messengers and they left their deeds and acts of worship and they began to follow their desires, they shall all be cast into a punishment except those who repent. May Allah make us from amongst those who repent. إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ Those who believe. وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا Those who do good deeds thereafter. Allah says, definitely those shall enter Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take us into Jannah. In fact, in tonight's verses, more than one place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the tawbah. In, in another place, Allah says, وَإِنِّي لَغَفَّارٌ لِمَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا ثُمَّ اهْتَدَى I'd like everyone to know that I am most forgiving to the person who seeks forgiveness and who believes and who does good deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the mercy of His at all times. Amen. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of Jahannam. And the fact that every one of us is going to cross over a certain bridge over Jahannam. It is the Sirat. As-Sirat, the bridge that will be crossing over Jahannam. Allah says, وَإِن مِّنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا كَانَ عَلَىٰ رَبِّكَ حَتْمًا مَقْضِيًّا ثُمَّ نُنَجِّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا وَنَذَرُ الظَّالِمِينَ فِيهَا جِثِيًّا there will be a bridge as thin as a hair according to one of the narrations of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Everyone will have to cross it. Those who were doing good deeds in the dunya will cross it like a flash of lightning. And those who were evil will be slower and slower. So much so that those who will be tight roping on it and they will have been evil, not engaged in tawbah, they will fall into Jahannam. Imagine if I were to tell you that there is a bridge or a rope over the ocean, a rope. This is hair-like. The one we're talking about is hair-like. A rope is a bit thick. Even if we have 10 ropes over the ocean and you've got to cross the ocean. I'm sure Jahannam is bigger than this Atlantic Ocean we see here. We would be very scared. Very, very scared. So this Allah is mentioning to warn us, to say, look, turn before it is too late. Allah says, وَنَسُوقُ الْمُجْرِمِينَ إِلَىٰ جَهَنَّمَ وِرْدًا The criminals shall be driven to Jahannam. But those who believe, Allah says, نُنَجِّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا We will save them. Those who were conscious of our commands, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure us. And may He make us conscious of His commands. At the end of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us how serious the statement is. The statement made by those who say that God has a son. Allah says, how dare they say that I have a son? Do they know what that implies? Allah says, تَكَادُ السَّمَاوَاتُ يَتَفَطَّرْنَ مِنْهُ وَتَنْشَقُّ الْأَرْضُ وَتَخِرُّ الْجِبَالُ هَدَّا أَنْ دَعَوْ لِلرَّحْمَانِ وَلَدًا وَمَا يَنْبَغِي لِلرَّحْمَانِ أَنْ يَتَّخِذَ وَلَدًا The sky is about to tear, the earth is about to come to pieces and to rupture and to explode and the mountains are about to drop because they know how serious the statement is that Allah has a son. Na'udhu Billah. May Allah safeguard us. Imagine the other creatures of Allah also know and they feel it when someone says God has a son. Do we know what that implies? Yes, Jesus, may peace be upon him, was a prophet. He was born miraculously without a father. And we have explained in the past that Adam alayhi salam, no father, no mother. Hawa and Eve, born through male with no involvement of a female by the miracle of Allah. 
Jesus may peace be upon him born through female without the involvement of a male by the miracle of Allah and all of us here are born through male and female may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all guidance and may he guide those who are uttering these words inshallah towards the good the goodness and the truth ameen then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commences a very interesting surah surah taha taha it is said one of the names of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because why do they say it's a name of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Because immediately after Allah says, Taha, He addresses the Prophet. مَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْقُرْآنَ لِتَشْقَى We did not reveal this Qur'an to you in order for it to be a point of distress for you. You know the kuffar, they make statements that sometimes we are also guilty of having, of having made. Some people come Muslims and they say, you know, Islam is very hard. Too many rules, too many regulations, too many rules and regulations. Well, the kuffar at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the same thing. Why do you want to follow this Quran? It comes to you with rules and regulations. Live how you want. This is the life of this, of this dunya. We will live, we were born and we will die at one stage. Enjoy. Life comes once. Haven't we heard that statement? So Enjoy. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, No, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this Qur'an was not revealed so that it can be a point of distress for you, so that it can be rules and regulations for you. You know, I went to a school, and I'm sure we all know, that those who go to schools that have more rules and more regulations, that school is a better school than the one that has very few rules and regulations. But does that mean now we should not go to those schools that have rules and regulations? No, common sense. The private schools at times, they have lots and lots of rules. They will tell you regarding the garters you've got to wear on your socks. Allahu Akbar. If you don't have that elastic band on your socks, they'll send you home. It's a fact. Why? That doesn't mean it's a bad school and too many rules. That is a school they want discipline. And this is what Islam wants from us. Discipline. We must be people. Each one of us must be potential leaders. Potential leaders. No drinking, no drugs. No gambling, no zina, and so on. We must be sober people who are intelligent, who have, who have a focus in life, and we continue, inshallah, in a manner that each one of us is a potential leader. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all leaders. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells that to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After a few verses, Allah makes mention of the story of Musa alayhi salatu wa sallam. Believe me, there are so many jewels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَهَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ مُوسَىٰ did the story come to you of Musa alayhi salatu was salam? And you know, one of the miracles of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not use the word Musa at the beginning. He says, did the story come to you of Musa alayhi salam? So the word Musa is used at the end. Why? Because the kuffar, they probably thought that their name was going to be there. You know, there is a verse in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of the hypocrites. And Allah says that the hypocrites are worried that any time Allah can expose them. So when the verse came down, did the story come to you about the kuffar? Each one was thinking that, hey, it might, my name might be there. Then what will happen? I'll be exposed. And Allah says, Musa. Then there was a sigh of relief that, no, this is a story of the previous prophets. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used words like this in order to draw the attention of the kuffar of Makkah. Like, for example, when we say, Taha or Alif Lam the meaning of these words, Allah knows best. Allah knows best. al huruful muqatta'ah They are separated letters. Do you know that every single surah that has separated letters was revealed in Makkah, besides the first two? Al-Baqarah and Al-Imran. Why revealed in Makkah? Because in Makkah, they used to put their ears in, meaning their fingers in their ears. They used to put their fingers in their ears. They didn't want to listen to the verses. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed verses that shocked them they never ever heard this they were so eloquent but they didn't ever hear Alif Lam Mim. once they heard that they wanted to know hey what's happening and as they left their fingers the next verse came in Makkah the verses revealed were very short and sharp very short and sharp so as they went to put their fingers back into their ears the verse had already finished so they were now contemplating what was said and as they released their fingers, there was another verse that hit them. As they put their fingers back, the verse was complete and so on. These are the secrets of the verses of Makkah to Al-Mukarramah, short and sharp. In Al-Madinatul Munawwara, the verses were now long because the Mu'mineen were now listening to it. 
So we must understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses certain methods to draw the attention of the kuffar. It's a miracle of Allah. This is why we say this Quran, nobody can compete with it. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about Musa alayhi salatu was salam. I want to draw one example, just one. I told you there are many, but let's draw one. Do you know when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Musa alayhi salatu was salam, he says, وَمَا تِلْكَ بِيَمِينِكَ يَا مُوسَىٰ What is it in your right hand, O Musa? Do you think Allah did not know? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew exactly, better than Musa alayhi salam, what was in his hand. But this was an opportunity for Musa alayhi salatu was salam to communicate with his Rabb. Now, the proper answer, if someone told you, what is in your right hand? I'll say, there is a paper in my right hand. That's it. But Musa alayhi salatu was salam decided, you know what, this is a chance. I might not get it in the near future again. Let me seize it and speak as much as I want to Allah. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is my stick. Sometimes I lean on it, ya Allah. Allah didn't ask him what you do with it. He says, sometimes I lean on it, ya Allah. And sometimes I use it for my flock. I use it to direct the flock, ya Allah. And he didn't stop there. And sometimes I use it for other things as well, Ya Allah. Allahu Akbar. Look at how beautiful it is. He is speaking to his creator and he's continuing uttering and uttering. What do we learn from that? The closest we are to our creator is salah in sujood. But with us, it's the other way around. We want to dart up again as though there are springs on our foreheads from spring master. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So as we go down, it, it, it rebounds, it comes back up again. Allahu Akbar. Yet, we are supposed to be learning from Musa alayhi salatu was salam. This is the opportunity that you get to be close to Allah, to communicate with Him. Why do you want to come up so suddenly? Take your time. And this is why we always tell the men and the women folk that don't leave your car running and say, you know what, let me quickly read my salah and come. Switch it off. Take the battery out if you want. It might be your last salah. When you come for salah, it must be complete concentration. Don't be bothered about time. Those people who complain about time, they haven't understood the lesson here. The same applies to the women folk. Don't leave your stove, turn it on and say, let me quickly read my salah and come and check on it. Switch it off, put the pot aside, read your salah, then come and do your cooking. We can't give preference to a pot of food over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nor can we give preference to a motor vehicle over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here is Musa alayhi salatu was salam. What a beautiful example. He spoke so much because he knew it's an opportunity. We too, when it comes to salah, let's take our time inshallah. May Allah make us really achieve the coolness of our eyes in salah. Qurratu ayni leaf is salah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, regarding the coolness of his eyes in salah, may Allah do that for us as well. So that is just an example that we have drawn from the story of Musa alayhi salatu wa salam. Another very potent example that we draw here tonight. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Musa and Harun to Fir'aun. Let's take a look at who was who there. The best of the time was Musa and Harun alayhi wa salam. And the worst of the time was Fir'aun. Allah sent the best of the time to the worst of the time. And Allah told them, go and guide him. Go and give him some guidance. Go and talk to him. But how should you talk to him? Listen, the best was sent to talk to the worst. Fir'aun, in our communities, is there anyone that we can say, this is the Fir'aun of my community? No, no one at all. No one says, I am Allah. No one, not at all. Not even from amongst the non-Muslims. At the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is reported that he said Abu Jahl was like a Fir'aun of his time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. But with Fir'aun himself, Allah tells Musa and Harun, فَقُولَا لَهُ قَوْلَ اللَّيْنَ لَعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرُ أَوْ يَخْشَى Go and speak to him with soft speech, with polite speech, with beautiful speech, so that maybe there is a chance that he can remember or fear. Imagine the best was sent to the worst and was told, go and speak very nicely. Now with us, when we want to correct and rectify something, what do we do? Firstly, we are not the best because we are not prophets. We are not Moses and Harun, Musa and Harun alayhim as -salam. We are nowhere near. We have our own weaknesses. And then the one we are sent to is not the worst. So we should be speaking even in a better manner. Allahu Akbar. But yet we get to the children, hey, why are you not reading your salah? Pick up a stick and go. Did Allah tell Musa alayhi salatu was salam, pick a stick and go and hit this man? Because he's saying, Ana rabbukumul a'la, I am your Rabb, I am your God. 
No, Allah says, go and speak to him softly, quietly. So from this we learn that when we go to tell others what is right and wrong, we must be careful how we word our statements and don't expect results overnight. Speak very, very politely. Make the people feel like they are Muslims. Make them feel wanted. Don't make them feel away from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really grant us all lessons from this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after that, makes mention of those who turn away from the signs of Allah in this particular dunya. Allah says, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكًا وَنَحْشُوهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى قَالَ رَبِّ لِمَ حَشَرْتَنِي أَعْمَى وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا قَالَ كَذَلِكَ أَتَتْكَ آيَاتُنَا فَنَسِيتَهَا وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَى There will be certain people who will be resurrected blind on the day of Qiyamah. Blind. And they will say, Ya Allah, why are we resurrected blind yet we could see in the dunya? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, No, when our signs came to you, our reminders came to you, you turned a blind eye and you did not listen to them. So today, because you forgot us in the dunya, we will forget you now, you won't be able to see. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us on the day of Qiyamah. May He make us from amongst those who can turn and repent every single day. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next surah, which is Surah Al Anbiya. Allah makes mention subhanahu wa ta'ala of the fact that the angels do not get tired. They worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they don't get tired. They obey the commands. They praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala night and day, day and night. And they never ever pause for a break. They don't get tired at, tired at all. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, and this was one of the last verses we read tonight about the day of Qiyamah. And the fact that he will put up a scale, literally a scale that has good and bad. A scale that has on one side the good deeds and on the other side the bad deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, on the day of Qiyamah, Allah says, we will put up the scales and we will weigh the deeds of every single person, the good and the bad. And Allah says, even if there is a mustard seed's weight worth of good or bad that is done by anyone, we will bring it to book. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for the bad. And may he count our evil and meaning may he count our evil and forgive it. And may he multiply our good deeds, inshallah. And may he multiply the good deeds to the degree that we earn Jannah through the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.